Reinventing an icon is a bit like reinventing the wheel. Where would you even start? More to the point, how on earth do you duplicate a vehicle that's perhaps the world's most recognizable, let alone improve on it? Even Volkswagen admits they misfired with the second generation car, or New Beetle. It was too hippie, too dippy, too simply formed, and too childlike. The follow-up to one of the most wildly successful cars in history was too one note. It evoked the feelings held in some baby boomers' minds relating to the first bug in the late 1960s. And that's it. What then makes a third gen Beetle? More cues from the original, that's what. Taken in from the side, it's apparent that VW snagged the windshield and roof from the Type 1. Unlike the second gen car, at a glance you can tell if the new car is coming or going. So not only is the new Beetle more attractive, it's more mature. And if you believe Volkswagen's marketing machine, more masculine too. While the new car is quite evocative of the original, it somehow misses being a slavish derivative. Sure, they copy the wheels, but in a smart way. Most subtle and impressive of all might just be the design Easter eggs found in the rear tail lamps. Look closely and you'll see that they're taken from the upright shape of the 1967 Bugs taillight assembly, but rotated 90 degrees. Laying them down like this helps to both widen and lower the car, all the while keeping part of the original spirit alive. It's sharp design, really, but is it sharp enough? Probably not. Trying to recreate the magic of the first Beetle is like trying to bottle lightning or recapture your youth. It's a worthwhile endeavor, but ultimately fruitless. Still, the new bug looks pretty good, no?